Example 1 here on proof by contradiction, taking a look at proving thirds are irrational. So here Rasa proved by contradiction that the square root of 2 is irrational. Now to start with, we take a negation here. So if we're saying that, or what we want to prove here is that root 2 is irrational, we're going to start by assuming root 2 is rational. So assume root 2 is rational. So assume root 2 is rational. Okay. Now if root 2 is rational, that means we can express it in the form where root 2 is equal to p over q. Okay, that's if it's rational. Okay, it's important to note here that p and q, so p and q, must both be non zero integers. So p and q are both non zero. We'll write this down in full both non zero integers. Okay. Now we also assume p and q have no common factors. So p and q have no common factors. Okay. Now we've got everything we want to assume here to start with. So now let's start with this idea here that root 2 can be expressed as p over q. So root 2 is equal to p over q. Now here to start with, what I'm going to do simply is get rid of this square root by squaring the left hand side and the right hand side. So in that case I get 2 here, because if you square the square root of 2, that would just simply give you 2 there. And if I square p over q, that would give me p squared over q squared. So here now, what I'm going to do is get rid of this denominator here, get rid of this fraction, and times the left hand side and right hand side by q squared. So what we get now is p squared is equal to 2q squared. Okay. So in this case now, what that shows us is that p squared must be an even number. So therefore, p squared is an even number. So p squared is an even number. And if p squared is an even number, that also means p is even as well. So therefore, p is also even. Okay, so p is also even. Now, if p is also even, that means we can express p in the form of 2k here, okay, for some integer k, okay. So in that case, what we can simply do then is substitute this p back into this expression here. So therefore, it's substituting that into this expression here, we get 2k all squared is equal to two lots of q squared, okay. And in that case, 2k squared would give us 4 k squared there. Okay. So 4k squared is equal to 2q squared. And then what we can do here is simplify the left hand side and right hand side simply through dividing by 2 here. So in that case what we get then is 2k squared is equal to q squared here. And in that case what we can see here, just like we saw from this expression here, we deduce that p squared was an even number. Well, here we can also deduce that q squared must be an even number. So therefore, q squared is an even number. And again, a similar argument follows here. That means q must also be even. So q is also even. So in that case now, if q is also even, we end up with a bit of a problem here. The issue here is that we've assumed p and q have no common factors. However, as they're both even, that means they will have a common factor. And in that case, that contradicts our initial assumption. Okay, so therefore, p and q share a common factor due to the fact that they're both even. So they share a common factor. So that's because they're both even, and therefore, in that case, that contradicts our initial assumption. So therefore, root 2 is irrational.
So this proves that root 2 is irrational. So we try this down in full here. This proves root 2 is irrational. Okay, and that gives us the solution to example 1 there. Example 2 here on proof by contradiction is taking a look at proving that there are infinitely many prime numbers. So here we want to prove by contradiction that there's infinitely many prime numbers. So to start with we need our assumption and what we're going to assume here is that this statement is not true and that there's a finite number of prime numbers. So let's assume that there's a finite number. Assume there's a finite number of prime numbers. Oh, there's a finite number of primes. Okay, now we've got our assumption. So in that case, if there's a finite number of primes, that means we could denote that full set of primes. So in that case, we could denote these as say P1 being our first prime number. We'd have P2, P3. And this would carry on up to P, N minus one, and finally P, N here. Okay, where P, N represents the largest prime number. So in that case, P1 would be the first prime number which is two, okay? So here, if we denote it up here, P1 is equal to two, that represents the first prime number here. And in that case, Pn is the largest prime, okay? So we denote this down here, so this is the largest prime. Now, let's consider the product of all these primes. So let's denote this as N, okay? So n here is equal to the product of all of these primes. So that's p1 times by p2 times by p3. And this carries on all the way up now to p n minus 1 and finally times by p n there. Okay. Now n here is a multiple of every prime number in the list. Now let's consider what happens if we add 1 to n here. Okay. So therefore. If we add one here, we get n plus one. And what we'd get here is this product plus one. So let's write that out in full. So that's going to be p1 times by p2 times by p3. And again, this extends all the way to the last or the large prime number here, pn. And then don't forget, as we're adding one, we need our plus one here. Now, if we divide n plus one here by pn, our largest prime number, or any other prime, pi, this would leave us with a remainder of 1. Now, as there's no integers that divide 1 other than 1 itself, that tells us n plus 1 must either be a prime number, when we've already assumed that there's a finite number of primes, we've already assumed there's a largest one, so that would cause a contradiction, or it must be divisible by another prime greater than pn, okay? So in that case, that causes a contradiction, okay? And the reason for that, like we just said there, is because we either have a, either n plus one must be a prime number itself, or it's gonna be divisible by another prime greater than pn, okay? So this contradicts our original assumption here that there's a finite number of primes, and therefore that proves by contradiction that there are infinitely many prime numbers. So therefore, this proves by contradiction So this proves by contradiction that there are infinite many primes. There are infinite many primes. Let's write that in full. Okay. And there we go. We've proved the proved by contradiction there that there's infinite many prime numbers. And that gives us the solution to example two there.